is an irrevocable trust? An irrevocable trust is an agreement allowing property to be held by one party for the benefit of another, stipulating that it cannot be readily revoked, altered, or amended. It's commonly used for asset protection and estate planning purposes. A trust is a legal tool that consists of a settler who has the trust created, a trustee who manages the trust, and one or more beneficiaries who receive the benefits of the trust. You'll also hear a settler referred to as a grantor or trustor. Then the next question we answer is about revocable versus irrevocable trusts and how they compare. I've been in the asset protection business since 1991. I believe we have over 65,000 clients in our database and have established literally thousands of, and, of trusts and companies for other law firms, accountants, and members of the general public. Revocable versus irrevocable trusts. A revocable trust, commonly a revocable living trust, is an estate planning tool that a settler can change at any time. So if your needs change, you can make amendments freely without the interaction of a third party. So why doesn't everybody set up a trust that's revocable as opposed to an irrevocable one? It's because the living trust is part of your estate for tax and asset protection purposes. So a revocable trust offers little protection from creditors or those who seek to sue you. It also offers no segregation of assets in order to qualify for Medicaid assistance. Plus, upon your death, such a trust is also yours for state and federal tax purposes. So why irrevocable? The primary reason people use irrevocable trusts is to protect assets from lawsuits. Legal theory commonly allows a creditor to step into the shoes of the debtor. It allows the creditor to do what he or she could do. For example, let's say a settler of a trust could freely change the beneficiary. The one who sued the settler could step into his or her shoes and change the beneficiary to himself. If the trust allowed the settler to independently spend trust assets on himself, the creditor could step into his shoes and do the same. Plus, some people use irrevocable trust to make sure that others carry out their wishes when they are no longer around. And this is common in a second marriage where a spouse wants to make sure that the children from the first marriage get at least some of the assets. So can I ever change it? Well, it's not quite like that that you can't change it, as there are often ways to make changes, and it depends on how the trust was drafted. But if the purpose of the trust is asset protection, the changes often require approval of a third party, such as the trustee. Now, most trusts for this purpose are discretionary trusts. For example, if you decide to cut out a beneficiary or add a new one, simply ask the trustee, and the trustee in its discretion can do so. So the trustee has discretion to decide whether or not the act would be for the best interest of the trust, and if doing so would put trust assets in harm's way. Now with most irrevocable trusts, the settler or beneficiaries may request the tr that the trustee make certain changes, and the trustee can generally do so if it does not put trust assets at risk. So to say it another way, if you could change it directly, the judge could force you to change the beneficiary to your legal enemies. So by making it irrevocable, you are more likely to get what you want, and that is the use of the trust assets. By requiring third-party intervention, it ties the judge's hands from directly forcing you to make changes against your will. Now, there are many kinds of irrevocable trusts, and not all are for asset protection. There are trusts to hold life insurance for charitable purposes, to reduce the tax bite, and to care for those with special needs. Allowances for the unforeseen. Properly drafted trusts allow for wide ranges of future possibilities. For example, there are circumstances that would warrant a change of beneficiaries or trustees. Perhaps mom and dad unexpectedly have another child. One child exhib exhibits evidence of long-term substance abuse. One child has a tragic military accident while the parents are still living. 
the trustee dies. A well-drafted trust addresses all of these circumstances. So how can it be irrevocable if I can really change it? Notice the operative word I. Irrevocable doesn't necessarily mean nobody on the planet can change it. It doesn't mean that you cannot suggest a change to someone else. It just means that certain people cannot independently, without outside cooperation, change it. And that's a good thing. Remember, if you could change the beneficiary at a whim, the judge could force your whim to be your enemy at law. Now, we all like control, but if the trust is written improperly, and you have to complete and you have the complete power to change the trust then you will likely likely get creamed in the courtroom and at that point the judge would be the only one who would really have the control and that would likely not be a good thing for you and that's because he'll force you to use that control and change the beneficiary to the person who sued you and that will allow them to take all of your money all the money held therein in order to satisfy the judgment. So to have real control, set up an irrevocable trust with an independent third party trustee and then put yourself in control instead of the guy who is suing you. Now you can get more information on how they work, how they're used and what to do by calling Asset Protection Planners at 1-800-830 1055 or visiting assetprotectionplanners.com. Thank you.